Feliz, no lo siguiente de estar aquí con todos. Well, it's not that I'm happy to be here. It's more than happy. I'm really happy to be at this conference, a conference that probably contains people that think that this is an important conference at a Spanish level, at a Basque level, at a, a European level. I'd actually say that this is the most important conference at a world level in the in the world of VET. I don't know if you agree me. So can you imagine what it is for me to be able to be up here on this stage after 18 months where I've been sort of locked away at home? It's fantastic. So I would like to say thank you. Thank you to all the team that's made it possible for us to be here. We've come from all around the world, from Spain. Uh, for all of this team, the um, hostesses, the people that are in charge of catering, the people that are behind the scenes. Behind the scenes is the NASA. I promise you, behind that scene is the NASA. And very especially, I'd like to say thank you to um, dear Jorge Arevalo and Ricardo Madrid, whom I've been talking to since April, almost since April about this conference. As Woody Allen used to say, you don't do things, you don't talk about things, you do things. You've got to walk that talk. So let's have a warm hand to everybody that's made this event possible. Bueno, 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 bueno. El mundo cambia, y tú? The world is changing. What about you? Well, that's the uh, title of my most recent book, which... Uh, was published about four or five months before the pandemic. Many people uh, called me in private and said, oh dear, this is a bit like Nostradamus, your title, isn't it? We all know that the world changes. We all know that we need to be on the ball. We all need to know that we need to accept change. But what we didn't know that this tiny, tiny bug was going to create the chaos that's going that it has created that was going to stop us from working and just survive for about three months but the world is changing the world has always changed we need to be able to adapt as darwin said we need to remember that uh, people start saying oh you know it's a time of a lot of change no 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 this is an unprecedented change of era, and we're lucky enough, and we should say that we are lucky enough to witness that. In just 230 years, we've gone from the first Industrial Revolution to the fourth Industrial Revolution, but uh, Industry 4.0 is now 10 years old. We're now heading on to Industry 5.0. So, how many of you had a telephone like this when you were at home? Raise your hand if you had a telephone like that back at home. There's a lot of Generation X here. Thank goodness for that. Well, I had one of those phones at home. Not so long ago, when I was uh, moving house, I uh, dug up one of those phones and my son said to me, Mum, what's that? And I said to him, well, you know, you're getting a bit old. He picked it up and said, goodness me, this is really, really heavy. You had to put your finger in these holes and dial people's telephone number. And yeah, yeah, I said, yeah, we only had one. And in one uh, people, uh, in one house, I remember they had a padlock on it because it was so expensive to make phone calls. And that just reminds me that uh, technologies help us focus, but they also make us more stupid. How many people uh, actually knew off by heart your telephone number, your home phone number? I remember mine, it was 2474519, and I'll remember that number until I die. But today, even when we're asked the phone of our own mobile phone, some, some of them have to think, oh, hang on a minute, I'm not too sure. So lesson number one, all the numbers, all the information that you've got in your mobile phone needs to go up in the cloud. If you don't have it in your cloud, the day that you actually lose your phone, you'll have lost your world of contacts. Why? Because mobiles have become our number one tool for connection for communication and interaction etc so how many of you know who who were around when the mouse was born raise your hand if you were around when the mouse was born you remember the day that microsoft uh, gave us this colored screen with a picture of a mountain on it i can imagine i i remember in the past i used to have a black and white screen or a green screen you remember those we're, we're not we're talking about ourselves this didn't happen to our grandparents we're talking about ourselves so remember just in a few short years we've gone from the mouse to the finger on the screen nowadays you give a three-year-old or a four-year-old child a physics magazine they start uh, moving their finger on it and then they'll chuck it away because they're not interested in it because it's not dynamic so what else has happened that's been really important the arrival of low-cost 
aviation, low-cost flights. This has changed humanity, even though you don't think it has. Why? Because it's been shown that 80% of the population, the Spanish population, was born until about 40 years ago and died in, in around 80 kilometers around where they lived. When did our parents fly? in very exceptional circumstances. Nowadays, our children just to dip into internet, pick out a flight for 29.99 and nip off to London for a weekend. And they really don't give a damn about whether they get a two-star hotel, a four hostel or whatever. With just some kind of a host, they're happy because the way they experience things is totally different the way we experience this things. So access to culture, access to these new life patterns is far easier. You may well agree with me that there's nobody, nobody in the world that who doesn't know what Coke is. Of course, we all know what Coca-Cola is. And that's thanks to communications. I find that really odd because sometimes when I give my talks, yeah, yeah, you know, a lost tribe. No, 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 there are no lost tribes. Anybody now knows via the phone that they've got can found us thousands of what we're doing thousands of miles away because our mobiles are like our number one gps systems and that's why the delinquency indices are difficult to control and you may say to me no no eva i haven't got my gps activated no no forget that you're designed to be found and we're being listened to as well just trial make a trial talk about something talk about anything and just leave your phone off next to you and probably in less than 20 minutes if you open any sort of app you'll get propaganda of what you've been talking about because we're being listened to for the first time in history companies such as these are designing trends because they can become trendsetters. This kind of company can tell us what kind of running shoes we're going to be uh, actually wearing this year, its color, uh, the heel height, etc, etc. And depending upon our purchasing power, we'll buy them or not. But what is true is that the brand, the of the uh, unknown brands won't appear so much and for the first time in history talking about digital twins which Mark spoke about yesterday there's going to be companies that are selling things that they still haven't actually produced they're trialing them in a digital world they're trying to create in third parties an experience on this uh, product that is being created creating a waiting list and when eventually the product is made on demand it turns out that because they've got a digital twin they've been able to validate the product before it's even launched so if we add to this the fact that what happens every 60 seconds in it, you suddenly get cold shivels and it makes you think. So let's just have a look at what happens every minute in internet. In every, every minute, there are three and a half millions of Google searches. Where do we find things before Google? In libraries? Yeah. I can remember when I was studying law, when I was given an assignment, I got up at six o'clock in the morning to try and find one of the few books that existed in the library. And if I was lucky, if our company, if our pa parents had a bit of money, we could have an encyclopedia at home. You imagine that? Every minute, we send 156 email, million emails. And I know there's 156 million emails, a lot of them could be avoided. But sometimes we misuse our email and we try to justify our work in colluding uh, in the message, people that aren't really interested in the message that we're trying to send them. But anyway, that's the way it is. Be careful because your professional brand is always linked to all of these things. And an email m means that you're occupying other people's times. And this is sacred. Other people's time is sacred. And although it's difficult to understand, at the same time, every minute, 16 million SMSs are sent. What else happens every minute? 452,000 tweets. Every minute, Twitter, social media, the only social media that tells us in real time what's happening in the world. A social media that, if it's used correctly, can help keep us up to date and be active and react in, 
just by a typical trending topic system that tells us about what's happening. Facebook as well. Facebook, there are 900,000 connections. It's the social media where there are most people. And let, as we're talking about as Facebook, you know that um, this week, uh, Mark Zuckerberg announced that he's going to create a metaverse, a sort of a second life where we're going to be able to do uh, things using a si simple avatar, a simple device, which may be some glasses like he's wearing. It's not quite sure what we're going to be doing, but it, some people say this is being done to relaunch the three uh, social media that are under the Facebook brand and others say that it's this the future and it's going to allow us to buy things, have a talk with any friend, attend events. I'm hoping that we're still going to go to face to face events. I'd rather be Ava than an avatar. I don't know about you. What else happens every 60 seconds? 55,000 million messages. 55 billion messages in that case, because it's so quick, WhatsApp. The day I taught my father to use WhatsApp, I didn't know my life was going to change so much. He keeps saying to me, where are you? Are you there yet? Send me a photo. What else? Every 60 seconds, 4.1 millions are... seen in YouTube. Our youngsters don't understand that we sit in front of the television and put up with adverts because the world is heading to a situation which we've all got very little time. We all have uh, little time to spend watching ads. So the youngsters go into YouTube. They've got their teachers, their uh, singer-songwriters, etc. and everything else they need. Also, 40,000 hours of audio or music in Spotify. Just remember how the what digital transformation does is it returns some business to the real world, such as the music world. We're never going to see so many concerts and merchandising related to music. Why do I say that? Because our, our famous, our favorite singers have to uh, recover the money that they're losing in other ways, in the past, you used to just sort of uh, buy a record, but now you can just download it or pirate it. But let's not do that to music. Everybody has uh, the right to uh, intellectual property and author's rights. What else? 67,000 new photos are uploaded every minute. of which 42,000 are in Instagram. Remember that every time you upload a photo to social media, you lose all the rights to it because when you see these uh, social media and you say, yes, 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 you click on all the conditions, remember that those photos no longer uh, belong to you. Your photos are feeding into artificial, artificial intelligence. Photos are now like 21st century gold, just so that you know that. What else happens every minute? Every minute, both in App Store and Google Play, 342,000 downloads. Nowadays, one of the most highly paid professions is that of app developer, because that's where uh, commerce is going. And why am I talking about that? This is another thing. 659,800 gigabytes of global transfers of IP data. That means that if it had a colour, you would be able to see the sky because they're so colourful. All of this link to what Bauman said to us 10 years ago. Bauman, I, I've been talking for this uh, 10 years now, and the fact that we live in a volatile, uncertain, ambiguous and changing world, that it's no longer necessary to talk about it more that, because I think COVID has come here to teach us something, <laughs> all of these things. And what is it that I see? I'm lucky in that I work for customers from different fields. What I see is people who know that they have to change, but that they're waiting, I don't know what for. 
for something. People that know that they need to take their profession by the reins, they need to take it in both hands, but they're waiting for something. And we just can't have that. This attitude, in addition to what, how very little there uh, many institutions and companies advancing and education advances because unfortunately that's true and laws laws that need to come about during this new paradigm means you get this feeling of come on come on please don't change me i'm in my comfort zone let's see how we can do things we add to this uh, professors that are born every day that uh, three four years ago didn't exist See, we have uh, uh, um, lawyers for uh, um, drone use, uh, and I recently had a physiotherapist for facial empathy, and they said, what for to feed artificial intelligence? And I had to look for someone like this. So they're demanding talent that doesn't exist in the year 2010 when there were no community managers, no social media, no marketing, digital marketing, they asked for a traffic uh, ma manager. So we've needed to uh, create this uh, new job descriptions. Our children will work in jobs that still do not exist. And to this, uh, we have these new areas of knowledge that have to be integrated because we can uh, not uh, forget about them. We have to see how, as professionals, we can integrate them. Everything that has to do with internet, new technologies, content design, that becomes uh, more and more important, uh, channels, uh, media, advertising, uh, search engines, uh, Google, uh, mobile usability, everything that has to do with data. When we hear these uh, terms, theoretically, we don't feel they are uh, ours or they cannot apply to us, then we need to look into them because in curiosity, we will find a path to integrate new concepts. Because what really concerns me today is not the global world. It's those of you here that um, director of a college, that a uh, teacher that is uh, working on a first job or developing a new module or this other profile of people that have a private school and depend on a, a official agreement and knowing many things have to be changed, they focus on having sp a specific number of students so they don't have to close their uh, school. For a day and a half, I've been talking with many of you. Um, I'm really interested in you leaving uh, this conference saying, well, there are specific skills demanded by the market and skills that if I develop will make my life better and that you remember that. And what are those uh, personal skills uh, that we have to work on for ourselves? Because no one else is going to do it for us. We need to... Uh, work, reflect on this to be able to serve this new wave of the market that is not the future but is already here and has come to stay. The first one is to uh, experience uh, management change as a competitive advantage, as a new way of doing things and offering through this uh, change what this new market uh, demands. If I, we had more time and I could say, which animal would you like to be for one day? Well, you would say an eagle, a dolphin, maybe a cat or a tiger. But uh, really, nowadays, we have to be uh, this animal. This is the cutest one I found on the internet with all the colors. But we need to be chameleons, an animal that mimetizes with its surroundings, that observes, that knows the place they have uh, in the world, but that has these uh, two eyes that don't look very nice, but um, allow us, uh, would allow us to see not only what we have right in front of us, but the global world with a 360 vision. We would be very powerful if we had this kind of vision. And if morphologically we don't have it, this doesn't mean that we cannot have this 360 mindset. The other one is a fear. 
We all feel uh, fear. Maybe and now we've uh, experienced fear more with the pandemic, but we bring all our fears to work. Uh, fear to uh, not being able to overcome something or do something different that I would like to do better than what I'm doing now. Fear to many things to not being taken into account. Uh, fear to your uh, uh, view not being considered. We need to rationalize these fears. And if we look into what we want to do, we have to be aware of this. And uh, something that's really useful for me, when I was little, I uh, felt fear of everything that had to do with the circus. If I saw a clown, I, I would see, uh, go into panic. And now I laugh uh, of these uh, fears, because the fears of today probably won't be the fears of tomorrow. And everything that is uh, black today will be gray tomorrow. And the day after that, we will start to work on it, and it will um, disappear. And finally, we will we'll be able to laugh about these fears. The other uh, skill we have to work on is uh, self-esteem. If you don't give value to your, yourself, uh, no one uh, will do so. Maybe your family does, your mom or your grandma, but if not, it won't happen. And that's how it works. I can't, we cannot wait for others to work on our self-esteem. We have to do so uh, by ourselves. We have to be like a tiger and a cat. We need to find the balance. We need to say things as we feel them, uh, with education, of course, uh, being polite, so we don't hurt anyone, because uh, self-esteem that uh, is uh, mm, not there is uh, something very negative. And then motivation. A boss I had a few years back said, uh, Eva, you come with your motivation uh, from home. And I didn't really like her comment at the time, but with time I understood she was right. Why? Because motivation is a part of the person. Motivation is born in us. My college, my school has to motivate me. Well, they mot will motivate you, uh, giving you a good working environment, uh, projects that are adequate to your talent, uh, reward you for your contribution, a good environment to, to be as brilliant as possible. They can motivate you in these uh, ways, but the rest has uh, to come from you. And I officially say that we are not anyone's uh, priority because we all have uh, our own uh, priorities. We can get someone's attention at a certain point and achieve something, but that's it. So uh, motivation shouldn't be in the hands of a third party because that's uh, starting to uh, die. And in here in motivation, I wrote 2022 because we don't want to remember uh, 2020, 2021, uh, more or less uh, the same in many aspects. So let's be motivated with 2022. What else? Resilience, this concept that uh, uh, has always existed, but that is even more necessary now. No one uh, is born being resilient, but we can learn how to be resilient. Uh, uh, we can learn how to have different attitudes in life because the um, life will be full of obstacles, new obstacles we, that we hadn't uh, faced before. So a person that is resilient takes uh, care of their mind and body and a person that has a healthy environment that allows them to grow. It's a brave person that can leave behind uh, toxic uh, persons that don't allow them to progress. It's someone that at a specific point in time when they need help from other professionals, they demand it, uh, and that's uh, resilience. And it has to be uh, applied in life because so nowadays without this capacity, it is very difficult to uh, continue. And this is something that also uh, Mark mentioned yesterday, and that's emotional intelligence. Nowadays, if you're not able to perceive uh, emotions of teams, customers, uh, students, uh, whoever, if you're not able to manage those emotions to uh, understand them and use them in a positive way, is uh, missing a tremendous competitive advantage. I will recommend uh, uh, purchasing Goldman's uh, uh, book, uh, Emotional Intelligence, and that you read a chapter every night. It changed my life because when you're able to go to the filter of the person you have in front of you and understand them, understand their uh, language, uh, 
their neuro linguistic language and uh, gestures this provides a tremendous advantage everything you do to um, build on your uh, emotional intelligence will make you better professionals than others that don't the issue of your surroundings we are uh, the uh, traveling companions that we choose if we have uh, someone that is no good that comes on mondays and starts complaining about everything meetings projects these uh, people are right by you and they are hammering you maybe you're really motivated and pleased but this person is affecting you too also we live in a competitive uh, surrounding and uh, jealousy sometimes uh, is the national sport so let's be careful with all of this resilience also brings us to this to choosing the right surroundings and environment and that goes through having courageous uh, conversations with those that surround you when i started to be an entrepreneur i uh, did a list of 13 people that were going to question what i was doing because i had a management position and they didn't understand that that i left this uh, good uh, uh, um and money and company car and so on so i made a list of these 13 people and with uh, most of them i had a dinner or lunch or had a conversation telling them i was starting a new life and the last thing i needed was uh, uh, their comments or uh, they could either change their attitude with me or our relationship would uh, change or cease to exist i lost uh, four kilos just by doing this because it's very complex because in this list there were uh, people that were uh, direct uh, uh, family members but this uh, brought me very good results of those 13 only one of them was left out so this was a big uh, uh, success for me but this is what you um, have to do you have to choose the people that surround you if you're surrounded by brilliant people you will also uh, be um, brilliant and uh, vocation but who am I to speak uh, about this? You oh, work in a um, vocational manner. If not, you couldn't be uh, um, working in this uh, field. Be aware of your responsibility because you are providing an education and training to uh, uh, young people and you will open doors for their future. Be aware of the relationship you establish with them so that later on they can find that uh, job that means a success for them. We always remember that teacher or that group that helped us be better and open the doors towards a better uh, professional future. We need uh, professionals that have uh, this. And if you don't love it, then go do something else. Because if not, you won't be happy. And to this, we add commitment. Nowadays, you cannot be... Uh, uh, 50% into something. You are 100% or you're not. And we also have the issue of values. Nowadays, in this hyper-connected world, and not a, um, you cannot do just absolutely everything. People say to me, Eva, we're full of uh, uh, corruption and many other things. There's always been corruption. But now, at a specific uh, point, uh, when something happened in the past, this person would uh, pay the local newspaper or whomever, and uh, uh, it was uh, hidden information. But now there's always a smartphone or a recording or someone that has observed it or that was told about it. And with a simple tweet, you can... Uh, um, discover uh, many things. So nowadays, values and ethics are uh, really uh, significant. In a world of connections, it's impossible to be different to uh, this. You always need to be aware of this. And of course, strategy. We need to have clear goals. I love these uh, things I hear in social networks. Follow your dreams. You can achieve absolutely everything. You can't always do so. And you should follow your dreams. When you have a dream, this dream has to be translated into a project. And this project has to have specific goals and uh, deadlines. If not, as Calderón de la Barca uh, said, dreams are just dreams. So we need to uh, think big, but 
a dream won't be a big dream if we are not able to implement it. And this strategy goes together with what we said before, being focused. A professional is focused every day on what they want to achieve. When I work on my projects, I disconnect my mobile, even uh, sometimes I leave it outside the room. I don't receive any kind of messages. I'm fully focused. If you're on your, uh, in your job and you're focused on someone says, let's have a last minute uh, meeting, you have to ask. Am I focused on my strategy? Is this something uh, urgent? Can it wait? Can we see this maybe this afternoon? Be careful with those that uh, uh, steal your time. Why? Because professionals that have strategy and focus know what they have to do. They have to continue progressing because we know what we stop doing uh, today will have a direct consequence on our tomorrow. And then we have uh, productivity and uh, effectivity. Uh, productivity, doing what you have to do in a correct uh, period of time or in the time that is demanded. But we also need to be effective while we execute the whole process we're also questioning if this is the adequate process if anything can be changed if there's anything that is useless or that won't be providing any data later on so that when the process is repeated we can improve it and uh, may be executed in less time and with a clearer results so we are speaking about being effective and excellent in the work we do uh, working day is uh, many hours you can do a lot so uh, reflect on what you've done today what have i you've achieved that day and it's amazing how much uh, time you waste on things that don't provide a, a value neither to you nor to the organization you work for. So the personal task you have to do is a mm, big one. Every night before I go to bed, I ask myself, uh, what about today? What did I learn? Is there anything that happened to you today that changed your life? Did your uh, ideas today are ideas that you can develop in the future when i ask myself these questions and i have no answers then i know that something that needs to change and you need to do this because if not at the end of the day you're just being a an unhealthy mediocre person that uh, makes you less uh, happy in your career and now we're going to look into those skills together with the skills demanded by the new market. The first one is to have a, a business strategy vision. When people ask, what is uh, being a good professional? That is being able to measure the impact of your decisions on a whole business. That is, uh, we come from a culture where we seem to live in different departments. There was a lack of information. We're in a culture where information was power and people wanted uh, just to get the credit for everything. But now we're in, a, we're in a different era. It cannot be so. The second uh, uh, skill, um, and that's something we've been talking about uh, in this conference, is uh, collaboration. It's very clear for uh, all of us. We can have ideas, but together we can achieve much uh, more. And understanding collaboration as knowing how to work in a network and uh, having the network at our disposal. So create a network uh, together with others, learning in network. And I'm not just uh, speaking about our students. What about us? What do we do to uh, learn in a network and to use all of these new systems? And then we have a, a leadership in network because it's not the same to uh, teach in a network or negotiating in a network to doing so in person. It's complex. So all this side of things of uh, management skills have to be transferred to the digital world. And the other skill that will make us stand out compared to other professionals that do the same things that we do is to be able to identify trends because the world is uh, changing. We've uh, seen them. We've seen examples from other uh, countries. 
So that professional that is able to integrate new models that help through this uh, trend and allow us to uh, make decisions uh, regarding where to invest your money, for example, will make us better professionals. So as a college, a school, what are we doing? But are, what are the rest uh, doing too? What are they doing over there? How can I integrate that in my uh, college? So we need to have people that in our teams that are uh, looking to see what are the trends and that have the need of always being up to date. And of course, we also need to innovate. That would be the next skill. Curiosity versus critical spirit. Being fully aware that be, there will always be a divergence that to bear in mind. If in my work team, I'm working in an innovation system, then I need to uh, work with uh, um, uh, testing and uh, trial and error uh, culture because sometimes you're wrong and that's it, and innovation stops there. No, we need to continue, uh, even though there's a trial and error culture. And always uh, be aware of the uh, soft uh, skills that are really significant. When I uh, interview people for a job, I always take into account soft skills that are really important, and those are the soft skills that uh, show your real talent. If you are not good at negotiating, I will teach you. But if you're able to manage uh, critical situations and are emotionally powerful, I will probably prioritize uh, nowadays your experience and these soft skills uh, and a degree. And this is what's happening nowadays. The next uh, one is to be always in a, a better uh, phase. Be aware that what we know now is not enough in three or six months. Things are changing really quickly. Toffler said so many years ago, the real um, illiterate of this uh, century are those that are not able to unlearn to learn again. And it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable, because if today my boss uh, tells me you're really good at what you do, and now, um, for what I receive my uh, wages and for what I've been acknowledged by my team changes, this is uncomfortable. Well, so I have to uh, be outside my comfort zone. That's what I have to do, get out of my comfort zone. Yes, we have to do this and Try to always be comfortable, and you do that by uh, uh, upskilling and reskilling yourself. I have a daily responsibility because there's people that give you what's most valuable for them, their time. They're going to be listening to you for 40 minutes. So imagine I came here and I gave you um, uh, data that is not updated. So we all have the responsibility of doing what's uh, expected from us in the best ways possible. And this new uh, term, learnability, that is here to stay. Do you know what learnability is? It's something uh, beautiful, the wish of uh, wanting to continue learning throughout your life. And I think I'm going to tattoo this term on me. And all this also uh, has to do with uh, digital uh, skills. So we are going to choose to learn. We have this whole environment that allows us to acquire uh, tools like this ones to be more effective, to be uh, better at what we do. And then there are other tools that help us work in a collaborative manner and uh, others like a slab that allow us to work with anyone in the world with good, uh, um, a good curation of contents for the project. We need to integrate all of this. We need to do so to be able to have time to do other stuff. And uh, uh, the seventh skill is uh, being a content curator. Nowadays, it's very important to see who can manage information. 
uh, because we live in a world of there's, where there's so much information. We're receiving a uh, high degree of uh, um, data. We have a lack of um, credibility, even governments. Why? Because during the pandemic, we've uh, been deceived. Sometimes we've told to have truths. Uh, we were in lockdown when supposedly we shouldn't uh, have to be. I hope there is a commission that explains what's really happened. But um, if we're not able to learn from uh, uh, real sources, we won't be able to uh, progress because if not all these things appear again, fear and many other things. This uh, uh, conference has been organized because they haven't uh, felt the fear. And uh, until I was uh, here, I thought, will we be able? Will we get to the sixth wave and everything will be closed again? So if you don't have uh, um, sources of information that you uh, trust, you won't be able to progress in that sense. And the uh, eighth skill is networking, which is the art of building uh, relationships. You're here. This is an event that allows us to network. The issue is, last night many of us uh, shared some ciders. Networking is not about just uh, having a drink together, which uh, also is part of networking. Networking means I found you, we had dinner together, we've shared a wonderful food, uh, this wonderful hike, and I realized that I can do something with you or that you can contribute uh, to my uh, um, life. Networking finishes when all these relationships end up in your database. You're able to send a first email, and when you have another cider uh, uh, next year in this conference, or when you come here on holidays, or because you have a common project, you uh, celebrate you're doing something together. Integrate uh, your influence community and uh, bringing those that are going to help you. And this will, has been. Uh, one only uh, chance. Networking is giving and giving to receive um, when you need something. And now we're very close to uh, anyone uh, through social networks. And the last skill, and I will be finishing with this, is having a professional brand to develop. I call it e-leadership because we're what Google says about us. If you I write your name on Google, I will get some uh, info. So bearing in mind that an 80% of projects and opportunities in the world now only uh, happen through the internet, you have to be there. You have to be there, you have to use a, a channel. Your students will also want people that have a powerful digital footprint because that gives them the feeling that they're going to a, a school that has these uh, people that have these uh, powerful footprints and these people are the ones that can explain to them what is happening in their world and what they can uh, do. And this is an open window to the uh, world uh, um, seven days uh, per week, 24 hours per day from any device. Everything you do uh, to develop your personal uh, uh, brand in different channels will be very positive. And your personal brand is everything we say, do, or share, as well as the value we can generate in a third uh, party. And that's why people want us in their project. I'm not here by chance. I'm here because of my brand. Because since the year 2011, I've been sharing knowledge on Twitter with Jorge Arevalo. And one day he said, I'm going to organize a conference. I saw your last book and I want you to come and speak about this. If it wasn't for this uh, connection, it would have been much more complex. So you also have to work on your professional brand, solid human, trustworthy brands that share um, information and are able to explain to the world uh, who you are. In any case, this is a, a train that has already left the station. Not that being uh, in this train will be missing the opportunity. So we're here in the train of the future. And I just want to add that making your professional and personal future something extraordinary 
is uh, only something you can do something about. It's in your hands. So thank you.